All the while, the cars kept pouring in, tuned and polished to the minute. The grand and the not so grand, but all with a firm place in our motoring history. By now, Connie Reserve was filled to overflowing, not only with cars, but with characters. So, gentlemen, um, is this one of your former customers, or what's the situation? Uh, not at the moment, he's not, no. No? This is a bit of a special one, this one. Right. You uh, hungry at all? Uh, I'm not sure. Lift the lid, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like? We've got Coke, brandy, milk, chicken, cup of tea. Well, what's the history? How did you come by this vehicle? My brother was working up at Peterborough and uh, a bloke on the name Mr Bowers, who was a local undertaker up there. David said if he was to sell the automobile, I'd be interested in uh, buying it and not putting a price on it then. And I suppose five to eight years after that, Mr Bowers rang up and said, look, I'd like to sell the automobile if you, if you want to see what you buy it. And David said, oh, yeah, for sure. So we went up there and had a look at it and... Uh, <laughs> He said, 600 bucks and it's yours. And we said, oh, yeah, fine, sold. What kind of glue do you use to keep these on? What type of glue? What kind of glue? They seem to be... Uh, yeah, we stick them on every day. <laughs> <laughs> they come out, I'm sure they must. Oh, they come Cooking mattress apart at home. Hold on, right? hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, he's got something We've here. even got our own special brushes. Yeah? Oh, no, you're to, kidding. To bring them. Oh, no, you've got to, you've got to keep them out, haven't you? <laughs> I thought they might have been as old as your car here. Uh, well, hold on, if I take the hat off, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, you should take all this off here, glue it on Tra top there. Yeah, a transplant. Oh, you're right, yeah. Do a transplant? If Elton John can do it, anybody can yeah. do it, right? Here's someone not taking any chances, whether by two wheels or four, they're going to make it to Birdwood. But any breakdown won't be due to any lack of preparation. The Vulcan is a 1910. It's taken me about uh, 20 years to get it to the stage at now. You'll notice the penny farthing bicycle on the side. Hey, what's that just I'm in case you break down on the way? Oh, yes, I'm the president of the penny farthing club, and they want us to ride our bikes up there in the main street of Birdwood. The only way I can get it up there is to put it on the side of the car. <laughs> so, yes, in case I break down, I'll ride that and my wife can walk. <laughs> it's a poor sort of the motor, mono block. It hadn't got a separate head. You have to lift the whole block off to get the head off. It's a worm drive at the back, three-speed gearbox, handbrake on the side here, Quick release, <laughs> and your gear leader here. Sounding device, rear vision mirrors, your kerosene lights, your acetylene headlights in the front. Were they an expensive vehicle in their time? About 358 pounds. When you think a penny farthing was 14 pounds, and that was about two years' wages. So in their time, they would have been quite an expensive vehicle. Any historical event on motor vehicles would be sadly incomplete without the two-wheeled oldies. Well, how long have you been into bikes? Uh, from the age of 16. Oh, okay. So that's, and I'm 72 now. And what model have we got here? 1942. How much work involved in restoring this one to absolutely oh, immaculate condition? Well, hours and hours and hundreds of hours, and I've never ever kept an account of what it cost me, because if I did, the undertakers would have got me. <laughs> and you've got a few badges there. Any yes. of those very significant? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I said I used to have. Uh, AJS, uh, Excelsior, which I've still got. Is this the best of the lot? This is the best of the lot. What makes it so special? Oh, well, it's got three wheels. Oh, Elf tiled me up. <laughs> when, you get, when you get too old, you've got to have that extra leg to hold you up. Well, I feel the years coming on fast. How about giving me a ride and I'll see what it does sure, for me? Sure. Right. Is there an elegant way to get in? Uh, you're doing the right thing, the right, the right to start. Right. Can I keep this over my knees? Yeah, you can keep, keep it over. <laughs> One of the quickest trips to Birdwood today will be in this classic from the Ford stable. It's hardly Formula One, but in its day, it was one of the fastest cars in the world. Well, this was the, uh, what they call the Fronty Ford. And the Fronty Ford were famous in the 1920s for uh, races. As a matter of fact, it won 45 out of um, 50 starts in America. And when they closed Maruba Speedway, they still held the lap record at 103 miles per hour when they closed Maruba Speedway in Sydney. And they're, they're a very simple machine, very light and very fast. So how will this perform today? You'll obviously have no trouble getting up there. Well, we just drove over from Sydney in it, and we've driven it across Australia from Sydney to Perth, so it's done a lot of miles, and, 
and today's run will be just a piece of cake. Where are you going? Birdwood. Oh, which way is it? That way. Oh, that way. We'll see you there. <laughs> Birdwood. Where are you all going? Why do you have a piece of salami on the front? What's the salami for? That's uh, matured. Fun seekers and enthusiasts alike, the magnet that is the Bay to Birdwood has drawn them together. The big one is about to begin. Time to load up and start the engines. Before Stanley blows the boiler, there's just time for Premier Bannon to unveil the commemorative plaque. Then, with the preliminaries out of the way, it was on with the main event. Please depart from the carriageway! Honey Claire, Lorelli, come in! And so, on to Birdwood, amid words of encouragement from the thousands of onlookers at Glenelg, the multi-million dollar motorcade was on its way. The first leg along Anzac Highway, a mere shakeout. It was what lay beyond that held the terrors for our hardy veterans. But now it was time to let loose and let the oldies have their head. The Bay to Birdwood has become as much a spectator event as it is one for the participants. So much so that people lining the route make a day of it, entering the spirit of the event, cheering their favourites as they pass by. Ladies, you came prepared. Oh, we did. <laughs> What's the idea of this? Well, that's so it doesn't get hot. <laughs> and it's a, it's the a bottle's a... empty. <laughs> so you just about put on a new bottle, eh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. How many bottles have you got? got? <laughs> I have no idea. You have to uh, the excuse. I can't <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough to keep us going. And for how a while. long will you stay this morning? Well, we're waiting for friends to go by. And what will you do once they appear? Well, hopefully they're going to stop across there and have a champagne and they can continue on. <laughs> Back on the road, the procession is by now well underway. And as the highway is still open to regular traffic, the run is conducted under the watchful eye of the military police. Early on, the first breakdown of the day. It's still, has she? Yeah, the clutch is uh, flying up a bit. And with him on the back, it's not real easy to come over. Oh, I see. Having a good trip? Enjoying yeah. yourself? Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> I'll bet you do. Hey, you've got a long way to go yet, haven't you? I hope so. <laughs> Adelaide, long renowned as the festival city, is of course home to another major motoring event, the Australian Grand Prix. We're just coming around the corner into the Cannibal Terrace, part of the Adelaide Grand Prix. This must be the slowest group of Grand Prix cars. There's a few races around, but uh, definitely not doing the 270 odd kilometres an hour that the, the Formula Ones do. We're ripping along here at uh, 25 to 30 miles an hour, which is about Oh, 50 kilometres an hour, 40, 50 kilometres an hour. So if we multiply that by about eight times, we might get up to the top speed of a, of a Formula One racer. The 1910 Hells Angels in front of us, and Bootlegger, obviously brought across from America. A Dodge 1924 Tray Top.